Hey everyone, Brandon Charleston here, coming at you with another video and tutorial. So let's talk HTTP API, uh, and HTTP API specifically used within Clay. So um, as you may or may not be aware of, an API is essentially an application programming interface. And what that means is if two platforms or programs are not directly integrated with each other, this is essentially you linking them two together in order to do any form of data exchange. And so for that, in a lot of cases, Clay has a lot of wonderful integrations uh, for the most part to get you started and to do pretty much every single bit of workflow uh, that is commonly used, uh, such as scraping and uh, enrichment. But in some instances, and like with many different organizations, you use different CRMs and different data tools uh, that may or may not be uh, supported within Clay. And I'm here to tell you that Clay uh, has a wonderful feature, which is HTTP API. Obviously, you have to have the plan that supports that in order to use that. Um, but I'm recording this video to kind of elaborate on the existing videos uh, that were posted uh, that I saw from Matthew and as well as Arturo, which are wonderful and helpful. Uh, but I'd like to kind of elaborate on maybe some areas that might be confusing uh, to folks and hopefully provide some clarification. So that said, let's get into it. So uh, expanding on the table that I've created using several different AI models via HTTP API, um, I went ahead and populated some common um, columns that I use uh, for me personally. And so for that, uh, I can relate, um, you know, or relay some, um, some use cases here. So in this case, Claude, as an example, um, with any API, what you'll want to do first and foremost is whatever tool or database that you're looking to use, you want to simply Google or search to see if they even have an API documentation. And it's worth exploring. Uh, and a lot of times there's going to be developer uh, focused language in there, which may or may not confuse you. Um, but hopefully I can provide some clarification there. So you're going to need three things. You're going to need Need to know the method. Uh, in this case, there are several different methods depending on what your API call is, because that's essentially what it is. You are doing uh, a number of these um, depending on the actual task, right? So for this one, um, you want to know the method. In this case, for Claude, it's going to be the post method. Then you're going to want to know the second thing, which is your endpoint. Your endpoint is the URL, uh, which uh, whatever the endpoint is, it could be a task. There could be a lot of variables associated with, associated with that. Uh, but you're going to want to set the endpoint for what you're trying to accomplish. And then the last but not least uh, is the, th the third vital one is an API token or an API key. Um, and so obviously you'll need to reach out um, to whatever platform uh, or generate a key uh, that is relevant to your account so that way it could work uh, on your behalf. So that said, other variables that uh, depending on what you're actually looking for is there's going to be some JSON body language uh, and different data points that you want to uh, carry over. In this case, obviously with Claude, I'm defining the model, max tokens, and then this is the message. This is per their API documentation and within clay the variable here uh, which is not in quotes uh, because you want to make sure you're not double quoting I just simply put in the the actual uh, variable with that and I'll show you other um, API models to where you'll see that or API calls and then as a, another point um, when you go into uh, so this is their API doc so you can see what you want to do is look for the curl method. Typically, you'll see uh, in their documentation the curl. And you can see just right here, they're, call they're doing a post. So that's when you want to go into Clay. And you're going to do your method, which is post. And then from there, this is the endpoint. So you want to use their endpoint, right? And then from here, you can see that there's three headers here. And that tells me that I need to go into the documentation and then add headers, right? So X API key, that's all you need to put in there, um, which is X API key. You don't need to put in quotes or anything. And then they're gonna say, put your API key in here, which this is what it is, okay? And then the next thing is gonna be the Anthropic version, which is this one. So what I'll do is I'll just copy that and put that straight into there, in which case you don't need to, uh, so there's gonna be the key and then the value. So you could see 
based on the key and the value there. So just make sure you match that. Very simple. Um, don't put it in quotes. You know, sometimes you need to kind of test it and to make sure uh, everything's populated. And by the way, in any sort of HTTP API call, the number 200 means you did a good job. It means it worked. So if it's any other number, it means uh, you have an issue and you need to address it. So, and then, uh, so those are those headers. So when you see any sort of area where it calls for a header, that is within Clay where you're gonna to want to go into the headers and define those headers, right? Then there's some instances where you're gonna actually have no headers. Uh, sometimes you're gonna have just an endpoint and sometimes you're gonna have a query, a query string as well. So you want to add those and it just depends on what's in the documentation. So that's a use case for Claude and uh, an example of a post method with some body language. All right. And then moving on to uh, Mistral, uh, which again is another AI model. So same thing. Um, and just by experience, you know, sometimes you just have to experiment, but I essentially, if you know you're going to push some information to something, just try with a post, right? If you know you're trying to get something back, then you usually want to try the get call. So if you're not entirely sure, usually one of those calls is going to work. Um, in this case, you know, other similar to other AI models, um, I knew the post method is the one that I wanted to do the most. Um, and for that, it worked. So same thing. You have the curl command, right? Uh, so I need to go here. So knowing that, I'm going to go into um, actually, well, I didn't put populate that, but a lot of it's the same. So you have three headers. You have the content type, the accept and the authorization. Now with that, I can just go ahead and go through it now. And so you're going to want to um, essentially just, you know, go into headers and then you're going to add the optional ones. Uh, looks like it's not doing it. And I have mine in there with my token. So, uh, so yeah, basically you're going to put in exactly this content type with no quotes. You're going to do the accept and then the value is going to be application JSON, just like I had in the Claude one, just like so. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, authorization. And then on this value, you're just gonna type in bearer space and just paste your API key. Uh, and that's all it's gonna be as the value that is in this particular one. So I'd actually type out bearer and then paste your API key. So that's how that one would work for Mistral. And that's just because obviously you could see there. And then the model, sometimes, um, you, you know, obviously read the documents, but uh, going into that, you may want to play with some areas, but you could see this right here, the content, and then right here is the prompt. So what I would do is I would just simply, you know, when I copy all of this, or when I put in this into the payload, it's going to be essentially a lot of the same where I'm going to insert the clay variable as the prompt, right? And so that's what you want to do there and then test it. Just, um, I would recommend you do a save and do not run. And then, so that way you can actually run just the one value and see if you get a 200 and then dig into it to see what kind of data that you're getting. So that's on the AI model and the post method. The next one that, uh, I use often, is uh, email validation. And so Bouncer is a popular one uh, amongst other ones as well. Uh, and this one is gonna be the get method. So again, all you need to do is just go in and look in their API docs and you're going to see that they have documentation getting started. And I just know by experience that it's gonna be the get command. Uh, maybe they had that here somewhere, but you could see here 200 is a good, good number. Um, and all you really need to do, it's just one URL. So you're doing a get method. And uh, we're just gonna post that API. And then this one, you would put the email, the variable obviously of what you're trying to do. And there's just one header, which is x-api-key. And just put your key in there and you're going to get the data back and uh, it'll work. So that's how you use that. Last but not least, um, you may use a CRM. And so for this one, I actually, let's make sure it doesn't populate here. And okay, it doesn't, all right, perfect. Uh, gotta make sure I don't give away any tokens, right? And so this one, 
Um, you may want to uh, use in terms of a CRM. And so with the CRM, um, you know, there's Zoho, um, there's, you know, applicant tracking systems like Loxo, there's a Workday, there's a million of them out there, right? Well, um, if they don't have something integrated, but they have an API, this might be useful to you because you may have a lead, right, that you want to push to your CRM instead of exporting and importing. You could very well look at their API documentation. And in this case, I just pulled up Zoho's, right? So there's a number of different calls that you can do, just like this. I can post a contact and create a contact. You can get contacts. So you can do a call to get contacts to probably see if something or a prospect is already in your database. Um, and then you can get the ID. You know, these are all different calls that you could do for that one specific task. So let's say I generated a list of prospects and I wanna check in my Zoho database or whatever database you use, you would use the get contacts and then it would be able to retrieve that so that way you could obviously not reach out to them again or whatever you want to do with people that you already have in your database and then just narrow the funnel down from there. And then of course, at the end of it, you would ideally send out, you know, via smart lead or instantly or whatever email platform you do, but then you would run another column and you would post a contact, right? So for here, you could say, create a contact with give information. So again, this would, we're looking at the curl command. This would be a post. This would be the endpoint, right? And then you would obviously need to know your organization ID, authorization, you would just put in the key value here. And then um, header, so it would be content type, application JSON, you can hopefully see some consistencies here. And then the data, you would see right here, this would be in the, in the, um, the payload. Now, I will say, obviously, there's a little bit of a learning curve. Well, that's subjective. Um, but uh, what you want to do is take the body parameters. And a lot of times, they'll have these curly brackets, right? And then it'll have the, the key and then the value um, of what you want to put in, depending on uh, how many parameters you want to uh, slot for that. And so, obviously, you would just change these to whatever, um, like the name, email, et cetera, et cetera from there and uh, and just play with it, right? Once you test it and you're able to get it to work, uh, best practice, what I would recommend doing, just so you're not doing it every time, is simply hit the save current config, right? And then type in whatever that call is, like create candidate in your CRM or something like that. And for that, that way you're actually creating uh, templates to where you know when you bring up that template, it's gonna populate everything that you want. and. And then what you want to do when you're setting up the template is set it up in a way that you know later down the road when you use it, it's going to ask you for those variables uh, within that. So for example, if I want to use Claude API, right? I, I made a prompt uh, or a, a window or excuse me, a column where this is my prompt, right? Or if I want to create a candidate, these are going to be variables that I have in the prompt preview. So these variables right here. So I know I need to match these to specific variables. So um, I hope all of this is helpful. Um, again, we're covering HTTP API uh, within Clay. So again, you need at minimum, Clay, you need the API docs to see if they have an API. If they do, you could probably get it to work. Number two, uh, you're gonna need to know the post, or the, excuse me, the method, okay, and the endpoint. And then obviously you're gonna need an API key. And then from there, that's when you start to really, you know, see what kind of data you want to either receive or send uh, within those platforms. And once you understand that, you can pretty much connect any database, any workflow that you want. And it's really just uh, you going down the rabbit hole of creativity and automation. So uh, that said, I hope this is helpful. Reach out if you need anything else and happy cleaning.